the last class we considered y feedback and we saw how we could uh, obtain a current controlled voltage source near ideal using that. Today we will see an example on the y feedback. The transistor feedback amplifier, this is only a signal picture, has the transistor with beta equal to 200 operating at 0.5 emitter current milliampere. Determine the loop gain, forward transfer parameter, input resistance and output resistance. So, what it means is that we have to identify the feedback and determine the proper loop gain and forward transfer parameter in this case. We have identified this as y feedback earlier itself. So, this is the feedback resistance, this is the amplifier, this is the load. Okay. So, we have the output taken across this, this is the input and this is the output current. So, in this situation we uh, take the y parameters because the y parameters of the amplifier add to the y parameters of the feedback network and I am now taking the composite y parameter which is very easy. When we define the parameter y parameter output is shorted. So, this 20 k comes in shunt with the input resistance of the amplifier which is beta plus 1 times Re. So, Re since it is 0.5 milli amperes is going to be 50 ohms because of 0.5 milli amperes current. So, beta plus 1 times Re beta is uh, 200 okay so 200 into 50 10k approximately okay so we will actually modify this so that our answers become beta equal to 199 so this is exactly equal to 200 into 50 so 10k so, now we have y parameter at the input when this is shorted 20 k comes in shunt with 10 k. This is the y i of the composite structure, this is that of the amplifier, this is that of the feedback network. And the other parameter is when it is shorted we have to find out okay, because of applying uh, voltage shear. Okay, G m times V i is the current in the collector, okay. G m times V i is the current in the collector and that will be flowing through the short circuit. Apart from that V i by 20 k also will be flowing, V i by 20 k will be flowing in the opposite direction. So, we have minus 1 by 20 k here, apart from that we have G m into V i, G m is nothing but roughly alpha over R e that is 1 over R e is 50. Okay. So, that is 1 over 50 that means 1000 by 50 milli siemens. So, both these things are expressed in terms of milli siemens. Okay. So, in fact, we can remove this k and express this in milli siemens, right. So, all these things are expressed in milli siemens, remove the k. So, these two are over. Now, we want from the output, you apply an voltage at the output, short the input and find out the other parameters, two parameters. So, output admittance okay, is going to be this 
this 1 over 20k will anyway come okay then we have 1 over 10k 1 over 10k 2 over 10k so if you say milli siemens so many milli siemens 1 over 20k 1 over 10k plus 1 over 10k so when i short this at the output we have this if uh, we had been given the output admittance of the uh, transistor that also will get added to this so this is the total output admittance under input being shorted now only this parameter when i apply an output voltage with this shorted the only reverse transmission is due to this 20k so minus 1 over 20 milli siemens this is the only reverse transmission so everywhere we have put this amplifier thing first okay amplifier y parameters this is zero okay forward reverse transmission for the amplifier is zero and uh, these are the feedback y parameter they are getting added so now the composite y parameter therefore in the, this situation is uh, 1 over 20 is really uh, 1 over 10 is 2 over 20 plus 1 over 20 is that means 3 over 20 milli siemens right minus 1 over 20 milli siemens right this is 20 20 minus 1 over 20 which is how much is it 19 point 95 millisiemens right so this is again 4 over 20 plus 1 over 20 that is 5 over 20 millisiemens all expressed in terms of millisiemens so this is the y parameter of uh, the composite network so how do i find out the loop gain loop gain is equal to y r into y f so 1 over 20 minus of that into 19.95 very nearly 1 of course okay. 3 over 20 into 5 over 20 so this is the loop gain how much is this this comes out and this is very nearly 1 15 400 by 15 roughly okay minus approximately 400 by 15 26 point six or seven or whatever it is that is the loop gain so it is negative indicating that it is negative feedback it is much greater than one so all these things are valid so good loop gain now we want to convert this in order to find out the forward transfer parameter input resistance and output resistance we have to convert it into z parameter it is the z parameter okay that is uh, the idealized parameter okay for this kind of feedback structure so we have to obtain the z parameter so this is uh, easy right these are all milli siemens so actually speaking we have everywhere this into 10 to the power minus 3 into 10 to the power minus 3 into 10 to the power minus 3 
into 10 to the power minus 3 coming into picture. So, that parameter is going to be okay, 5 by 20 into 10 to the power minus 3, okay, that is that I, this divided by this into this plus this into this. Uh, therefore, what is the delta y? That is delta y is equal to okay, uh, 5 by 20 into 3 by 20 into 10 to the power minus 6 plus right, 19.95 by 20 into 10 to the power minus 6. So, basically effectively this 1 very nearly 1 into 10 to the power minus 6 and this will be uh, 15 divided by 400 into 10 to the power minus 6 which is very nearly equal to how much is it 10 to the power minus 6 roughly because this adds on to this. So, very nearly equal to 10 to the power minus 6. So, dividing by 10 to the power minus 6 now is it clear? So, dividing by 10 to the power minus 6, we get the zi. Zr is 3 by 20 into 10 to the power minus 3, this divided by again 10 to the power minus 6. Zf is minus 19.95 into 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 10 to the power minus 6. And finally, Zf is 1 plus 1 by 20 to 10 to the power minus 3 by 10 to the power minus 6. So, out of this now what is asked is first the forward transfer parameter that is straight away here. Okay. So, the forward transfer parameter forward transfer resistance now. is equal to this. So, it's about minus 19.95 into 10 to power 3. So, you can see this, this is very nearly equal to the 20 k that we have used. This was the feedback resistance 20 k and ultimately the forward transfer parameter should be equal to minus 20 k. This is what we have surmised earlier. So, we are getting it as very nearly equal to minus 19.95. It is always very close to okay, the feedback resistance in the case of y feedback. Okay. Then the input loop gain is already evaluated right input resistance this is nothing but phi by 20 kilo this is 19.5 k right so this phi by 20 k which is really speaking 5000 divided by 20 250 ohms. So, input resistance is pretty low. See, it is a current controlled voltage source. Input resistance should go down and output resistance also should go down. Right? So, let us see the output resistance. That is this. So, 3 by 20 k that is 3000 divided by 20 ohms, 150 ohms. So, you can see that the output resistance also is pretty low, 150 ohms. Output resistance is low, input resistance is low, 
and forward transfer resistance has become almost nearly the passive resistance of 20 K. So, this is the way it is going towards its idealization. So, you are using a single transistor, we have seen how this negative feedback network modifies its functions, so that we can realize a fairly good uh, current controlled voltage source. We had earlier considered Y feedback in order to realize idealized current controlled voltage sources. Now, consider Z feedback applied to a single transistor. This is the single transistor amplifier. Since we are applying Z feedback and going to we are going to use Z parameter, we have to consider the RCE, the output resistance of the transistor, okay, as finite. We cannot consider it as infinite. This is important because we are considering open circuit parameters. RCE must be considered as finite. We cannot consider the current source as having infinite output resistance. So, we are now going to put in series with this input, this is going to be removed from ground and we are going to put in series with that a resistance RE. This is the feedback resistance. So, this comes in series with the feedback voltage here. So, the V i is from here to ground now. This earlier input comes in series with this. This output comes in series with this. Now, the composite Z parameter we have to write. This has to be written very carefully now. Composite Z parameter is that parameter when this is opened, open circuited. Find out, apply an input current and find out the output voltage. So, we will put down the equivalent circuit here as our original equivalent circuit R e. If this is I i, then we have beta times I i as the collector current and shunting this, we are assuming that there is an output impedance of R c e. So, this is the structure of equivalent circuit. So, for this now, we have to establish the composite Z parameter. So, when this is opened, if I i is applied, beta times I i will flow like this and this will flow like this. Establish a voltage here, beta times I i times R c plus in this direction minus in this direction. So, the voltage that is established, open circuit voltage is minus beta times R c e here. And since this I i is flowing here, this also should be I i because this is open circuited. Okay? There is a circulating current of beta times I i in this and therefore, when I i is this, this is also I i. Okay? So, the voltage here is I i into R e. So, this is going to be a further additional voltage in series with this. So, output voltage is this plus this. This is minus beta times R c e times I i and this is I i times R e. So, this is the effective ratio of output voltage to input current. This is the forward transfer parameter of the composite structure. Now, as far as the input impedance is concerned, okay, if this is I i, this is beta times I i, this one is beta plus 1 times R e. times I i and this is simply I i plus R e. So, this is going to offer an impedance of R e. That is over as far as input impedance, uh, uh, input impedance and forward transfer uh, impedance is concerned. Is over. Now, make the output current 0, input current 0 and apply a voltage here, apply a current here. If this is 0 current, there is no current in this. If this is open circuited. So, when I apply a current here, this current will be forced to flow through this like this. And therefore, output impedance open circuit is R e plus R c e, simply series combination of that. And the voltage input voltage for this current is going to be 
I not into Re. So, this is going to be reverse transfer impedance is going to be Re. This is the input voltage okay, for an input output current okay, I not. So, this is the composite Z parameter okay, of this feedback structure which is nothing but this. So, now we have to find out the loop gain which is nothing but this into this divided by this into this. So, minus beta R C E okay, plus R E into R E for it to be negative this should be dominant compared to this. This is always the case R C E itself is very high beta times R C is still higher. So, you can neglect this okay, divided by beta plus 1 times R E plus capital R E whole thing into R E plus R C E. Once again how to neglect this is large compared to this neglect this R E is small compared to R C E neglect this. Here we cannot say anything about this may be of the same order of magnitude. So, we get R C E getting cancelled with R E and in effect we have the loop gain equal to minus beta divided by 1 plus R E by capital R E okay, into beta plus So, this is the loop gain which is going to be much greater than 1 okay, as long as this factor is not too high. R e into beta plus 1 is going to be of the order of capital R e and therefore, this is going to be of the order of beta by 2 or so which is pretty high. So, we know that the loop gain is negative and is high. Then we can convert it into y parameter. by finding out delta z is equal to this into this minus this into this that is beta plus 1 times R e plus R e into I will neglect this R c e okay, plus R e I will make it R c itself plus beta R c e I am neglecting this right into R. So, this is the loop gain uh, that is delta z which involves the loop gain. So, this is the modification factor of all the parameters. So, let us now first find out the forward transfer admittance which is going to be plus beta R C E divided by this becomes plus plus beta R C E minus R E that minus R E is neglected divided by this factor which is beta R C E capital R E okay, plus R C E into R E that can be again ignored compared to beta R C E R E R C E R E. Okay. So, plus R C E okay, to beta plus 1 times so, this again is negligible. So, we can see here that beta beta gets cancelled, R C R C gets cancelled. This is approaching a value of 1 over R E as expected. So, this part that is the Y F of the modified thing is approaching 1 over R E. So, it is nothing but a voltage controlled current source whose forward transfer parameter is simply 1 over R e. Right. 
Now, it has boosted up input impedance. Okay, you can find out that by getting the y i. Y i is going to be once again R e plus R c e, in which R e is going to be ignored. This divided by delta z in which beta r c e r e dominates. This is the dominant factor. Okay? So, this can be really ignored. This is very nearly equal to delta z is very nearly equal to beta r c e r e. So, beta r c e r e you can see here right? y i is 1 over beta times r e or z i of this network is known to be beta times r e approximately. So, you can see that the input impedance is increased, output impedance also is increased. So, that is this r e plus r e into beta plus 1 divided by this is output conductance that divided by beta r c e r e. So, actually speaking right, you can say that this is beta r c e r e divided by output impedance okay, divided by r e plus r e into beta plus 1. So, you can see that it is nothing but okay, beta r e to r c e. Right. So, you can just divide this by this we had already considered as loop gain beta divided by 1 plus r e by capital R e into beta plus 1 okay, is the loop gain. So, original r c e gets multiplied by this loop gain that is the output impedance. So, you can see that almost every way it is going towards voltage controlled current source idealization. So, this is a very simple negative feedback circuit. Okay. This is also can be uh, thought of as this also can be thought of as a situation where emitter bypass capacitor has been removed and consequently it gives feedback. Okay. In our earlier common emitter amplifier assume that emitter bypass capacitor has been removed then what happens? This is what happens. This we have illustrated in the lab experiment by removing this capacitor and showing that the amplifier becomes linear input impedance increases output impedance increases. Now that you have understood thoroughly single transistor Z feedback and the Y feedback arrangement, I would like to discuss the very fundamental concepts about negative feedback using a single transistor where no passive network comes into picture that is total negative feedback. Okay. Total negative feedback of voltage or current what happens. This is interesting part consider the single transistor circuit. This is the input terminal normally output is taken there. There is no reason why output should be taken there, you can also take it at the emitter itself. But I would like to now see that if this is V i, okay, G m times V i is the output current, but that output current is also available here almost nearly at this point, it is not that. And I want to give complete feedback of the output voltage, that means output voltage if it is going to be taken here. Suppose let us say output voltage is taken here, right. 
this output voltage is fed back to the input. This is the amplifier, okay, input terminal, okay. This is the actual input before feedback. This is grounded. So, this input was directly getting applied to base and emitter junction. Now, base emitter junction comes in series with the actual output voltage. So, I can take the output as well at this point because Gm times Vbe is also available as current here, okay, instead of. So, I connect, connect this to ground and take the output voltage here. So, now this input voltage minus this output voltage is this, okay. So, this is exactly what we had considered earlier. This is my amplifier, okay. I do not have any feedback factor here, no passive network is being used. Output voltage is completely fed back to the input. So, this is V i minus V naught. Okay. This is amplified as A times V i minus V naught. So, what happens to V naught over V i? In this total feedback arrangement, okay, this G is equal to A. So, you get, if A is very high, this becomes 1. Okay. So, the basic concept of feedback network, we have put an amplifier with the gain G that is equal to A in this case and there is an error okay, detector here which will just take V i minus V naught and apply it to the input. If this is V i, this is V naught. Okay. V i minus V naught is what is applied to the input terminals of an amplifier. Okay. So, this V i minus V naught is really the V B E, G m times that. Okay. G m times V B E, which is nothing but V i minus V naught is the output current, that is the collector current. Okay. Emitter current is alpha times higher than that, that is the current that is flowing 1 over alpha times that. So, that is the current that is flowing here. Okay. So, if you have a resistance here as R L, which is normally put as R E, let us say. Okay. So, this current is going to flow through R L and that will be the output voltage. So, what is the A factor? Nothing but G m R L by alpha in this case. The same thing G m R L, which is nothing but G m R E in this case. R L is same as R E. Okay. So, I am putting a load which is called R E. So, gain is G m into R E instead of R L. Okay. R L equal to R E. Right. So, the gain A factor is nothing but G m R E by alpha. Okay. So, what is V naught over V i is going to be nothing but A by 1 plus A, which is R E G m by alpha divided by 1 plus R E G m divided by alpha. Okay. Or this can be rewritten as 1 by 1 plus divide this whole thing by this factor alpha divided by G m into R. Alpha is very nearly equal to 1. G m into R e is a huge value supposedly and therefore, this is going to be very nearly equal to 1. This is called common collector amplifier. because the earth is common to input and output okay, and that is grounded here. Emitter is not grounded. Emitter is the point where the output voltage is taken. So, this is the case of total negative feedback as far as the output voltage is concerned. Right? No feedback network is used. Right? So, you can see that this is the gain of the circuit which is very nearly unity gain. This is also called voltage follower. Output voltage will be following the input voltage always and 
since this output voltage is fed back to the input, input it is coming in series with the original input, so input impedance is increased, it is the output voltage which is sensed and therefore output impedance will come down. Okay. So, this is an idealization towards voltage controlled voltage source. Ideal voltage control voltage source, okay. Unity gain with feedback, okay. This gain is going to be very close to unity, irrespective of the load resistance that you use, okay. So, this is a common buffer stage used between source and another amplifier, so that the loading of the source okay does not occur by the amplifier. So, this is used commonly as a voltage buffer right. Similar to this could be a situation of total negative feedback which is current right. That also we have to see, let us now consider that. So, again if I give total current negative feedback the current gain has to become close to 1, like voltage gain in becoming close to 1. Let us consider this amplifier of ours. This is the input current, this is the output current. What is I naught by I i? This is equal to beta already defined. Okay. This is the short circuit current gain beta if I short this. So, this is a current amplifier. So, now I let us suppose give current feedback, what will I do? I will give this total current as feedback at this point. Now, that is a very easy thing I told you current feedback, this was originally I i and at this point now you will get the error current which is nothing but I i minus I naught right, because this is I naught. So, I naught is flowing like this. So, this current base current is I i minus I naught. So, now this does the current feedback, it is shunt okay. in, instead of in series now the current feedback is always in shunt with the original current. So, I naught I i minus I naught is the error current, this into beta is equal to I naught. That means, I naught by I i is equal to beta divided by beta plus 1 or 1 by 1 plus 1 over beta, which is very close to 1, which is actually speaking equal to alpha. So, you can see this structure, if you consider only in terms of current, this is the input terminal for the current, okay. this is the output terminal for the current. What is common to this, you can put a load here also, no problem, okay. that does not affect it at all, right. the current feedback is still. So, this is the output terminal for the current, this is the input terminal for the current. What is common to it is nothing but the base. Right? You need, so, this is common to this, this is therefore called common base amplifier. The earlier one was common collector amplifier, this is one with total current feedback from common emitter amplifier this is called common base amplifier. The current gain from here to here now is going to be alpha, okay, because this is the emitter current that you know anyway, this structure now becomes automatically common base, because actual input current is nothing but the emitter current and therefore, this is common base amplifier. Okay. So, what happens input impedance comes down because it is shunted the input, output impedance goes up. 
by a factor corresponding to loop gain. What is the loop gain? Beta. Okay. So if earlier output impedance is RCE, okay, the present output impedance is beta times RCE. Okay. If earlier input impedance is RE into beta plus uh, beta, the present output impedance is RC, that is RE into beta divided by beta RE. Okay. And the gain is also modified by loop gain plus one, beta by beta plus one. So these are the fundamental issues involved. So this is an idealized current control, current source. Okay. So you have now seen using a single transistor without using any feedback network, by giving total voltage feedback, we have realized a common collector amplifier which is called voltage for our this we have realized a common base amplifier which is called a current follower you can call it okay or it can be used for current buffer stages instead of voltage buffer stages you can have current buffer stages right so current control current source with unity gain okay so these are Therefore, also called wideband structures, the common collector and common base structures will have a bandwidth which is going to be again loop gain times higher than the common emitter amplifier bandwidth respectively for voltage gain in the case of common collector, current gain for okay, common base. It is the current gain whose bandwidth is improved by a factor of beta plus 1 in the case of uh, common base structure it is the voltage gain whose bandwidth is improved by a factor of beta plus 1 in the case of common collector stage. Okay. So this is the basis of okay, the uh, basic amplifier stages. The fundamental amplifier which we had considered earlier is the common emitter amplifier and negative feedback configurations are okay, common collector and common base respectively with total voltage and total current negative feedback. So we will consider double transistor stages or transistor pairs for negative feedback amplifiers okay, in the next class. We will note that using feedback networks, okay, it is not possible to get H and G negative feedback structures with single transistor. Of course, if you consider these basic stages, they are okay, H and G feedback structures, but these are not using additional feedback network for the feedback. If you want to use additional feedback network, passive networks, and these passive networks are to be becoming effective, then there is no possibility of giving negative feedback with H and G. We will see that H and G become negative feedback only when we use a pair. And in the case of a pair, you cannot get Y and Z as negative feedback. If you want Y and Z as negative feedback, you have to use a triple. Right? So this is the fundamental issue of negative feedback. Okay? If you use Y and Z with pair, you will come up with only positive feedback structures. The loop gain will be positive. This you can actually work out and see for yourself by evaluating the loop gain by the method that we have followed. So please see that if you use a pair, Y and Z feedback will be automatically positive. A pair can ha only have H and G as negative feedback, so on and so forth. So the odd number of stages will always be to suitable for Y and Z feedback. Even number of stages are always suitable for H and G negative feedback structures. 